Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Wednesday, June 8th. So <laughs> I had a junk journal mishap last night, but I'm not upset about it. And I feel like things happen for a reason. And what I've done thus far in the junk journal has taught me some lessons about what I want to do going forward with cross stitch projects and things like that. So last night I sat down to stitch on my Primrose Cottage Stitches Be Happy project, right? I was stitching it in three separate parts. And I pick up my junk journal because I just put my last coloring page in there. And I notice the first section is completely falling out of the book. So I pick it up and the string here was broken and the buttons were hanging. And then this part, which by the way is now out of the book, um, was hanging out. And I was so <laughs> mad at myself. I just yanked it out. So when I did that, I ripped some of the pages. Like, look, like they're all like ripped and, and falling out now. So what did that teach me? These junk journals are fragile. They are handmade. What happened was my book had gotten so fat in thickness and I was pulling this so tight that I think I pulled and stretched the string too tight. I mean, cause this is sewn in. The pages are sewn in that I busted it. I broke it. I did it. It wasn't a defect of the book. And I went in and I told Bill, I said, oh my God, look what happened. And I said, okay, well, some learning lessons, some learning lessons in the fact that you have to be gentle with these books, meaning I, going forward, putting stuff in a junk journal is not going to be all the doodads and thick stuff because, and putting cards in it, not really, because it will, it will tear the book apart. And that's not my goal with it. My goal is to actually keep it pretty simple. And I haven't really been doing that thus far because I would buy all this scrapbook stuff. And instead of embracing what the page is and just using the elements on that page and have my stitching be the showcase, I felt like I was really trying to dress it up, right? So I decided, because then Bill came in and he was like, well, we can try to fix it. And I said, you know what? I don't want to fix it. I don't want to fix it because now the pages are torn anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this book because I can use the rest of it if I want to. The rest of it is still intact. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I may take the pages out, cut them individually, and put them in my portfolio because I have a portfolio. I'm not sure. So that's going to go in my drawer for right now. And I have four other junk journals in there. I have a lot. So I am not upset by this. I'm not. It taught me some lessons. So I am going to start putting stuff in my Cinderella one, which is gorgeous, by the way. So what I also decided to do, I mean, look at the inside of it. Just, I mean, just stunning. So I probably am going to put my name here because this is like a library card. Probably put my name there. And this little tag is so cute. Um, what I'm going to really do going forward is I'm not going to put any more coloring pages in here. I'm actually going to keep the coloring pages in the coloring books. Yeah, decided to do that. Or put them in my portfolio that I have coloring pages already in. This is just going to be for stitching. And what I'm going to do is I'm really going to embrace the pages and just have the page be the showcase, my stitching be the showcase, but use really what is on the page. Because I think what happened too is I covered some of the pages with scrapbook paper and I think it made the pages stiff and heavy and it just a whole lot of stuff just added into that, that busting and breaking. So I went through here and I was looking to see what page I could put the be happy. Remember, I'm stitching this. I know I was stitching it in three separate parts. I looked at the inside, 18 count, the whole thing 
is only two and a half by five and three quarters. These pages are seven inches long. It'll fit. I can stitch the whole thing together. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start it over, which is not a problem because I hadn't had a ton of it done anyway. And what I decided to do, so I cut the paper. This is exactly the size it's going to be. Don't you love that washi tape? Oh my God. I love it so much. And this is going to go, I'm going to start in the center so it's perfectly centered. And then it, this is going to fit on the page. And the page that I picked, I'm going to use this page. So literally, like that. And that will probably literally only be the only thing on the page. I do have scrapbook papers and elements that are bee themed. I might put a few little stickers that are like yellow hearts. They have yellow hearts and black hearts. I might do that. Put this a little bit off center so I can fit some stickers here. But that's it. It is going to be so very simple now. Because I, this book needs to stay sort of like this thickness. Like no joke. And this is not very thick. And when I put a piece of... Um, cardstock on the back to mat it I mean you know to cover the holes it isn't too thick um but yeah learning lesson so very simple and it will alleviate all of the hemming and hauling that I normally do how am I going to put this in here what elements am I going to use just the stitching let the stitching shine that's what the whole purpose is yeah yeah so that was last night and um First off, look at the corners of the book. Don't you, my God. This book is so gorgeous. And I even have um, a Cinderella pattern called Run Like It's Midnight. And it's done like in a blue color. I definitely will have to put to stitch that and put that in this book like on one of these, one of these pages. Right? Yeah, I definitely have to stitch that. So, um, but I flipped through the whole book last night and it's just gorgeous. And I love the book Cinderella. So the whole book is interspersed in between here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to use the page elements. Let the book shine. Um, I want to say the woman is named Nancy that makes these. She's fantastic. Um, wait, do you see the Halloween one I got? But yeah, so going to restart this tonight. Okay. Yeah, not upset. Not upset at all about what happened with the other book. Lessons. Taught me lessons. Okay. We are going to read. Uh, my job today starts at 10. We are going to read a small miracle story because we all love them so much. I love these stories so very much. And then we're going to do the unfuck yourself entry. And then that's going to be it. Okay. Every Sunday morning at exactly 9 a.m., the 20 members of a church choir would assemble in the chapel of their small Southern Baptist congregation for a one-hour rehearsal before services. The choir consisted of longtime members who were dedicated, enthusiastic, and extremely punctual. One Sunday morning, the tranquil air of the sleepy southern town was suddenly pierced by a loud blast. Residents rushed outdoors to see what was happening and then watched in anguish as flames spurted out the windows of the small church. They checked the time, glancing at their watches, the clocks on their kitchen walls, the alarms on the night tables in their bedrooms. It was 10 minutes past nine. Gasps, wails, and shrieks filled the air as the townspeople raced towards the church. The volunteer firemen who had preceded them by a few minutes shook their heads mournfully as they arrived. In just seconds, the church had been totally consumed by flames. It probably was a gas explosion, one of the firemen said. It happened too fast. None of the choir members could have gotten out in time. I'm sorry. It doesn't look like there are any survivors at all. Everyone reacted differently. Some people bowed their heads and turned away in silence, grief-stricken. A few women crumpled onto the charred grass. Others collapsed into one another's arms and emitted heart-rending sobs. 
Paralyzed by shock, people didn't seem to notice the sudden convergence of 20 automobiles pulling into the church's parking lot at the same time. No one seemed to observe the 20 red-frocked figures running towards the church. Hey, what happened? They heard a familiar-sounding alto voice inquire, shattering the silence that had fallen over the mourners. Yeah, what's going on? Chimed in another well-known voice, a mellifluous soprano. My God, the church is in ruins, shouted an unforgettable baritone. In wonder, astonishment, and dazed belief, the townspeople gazed at the miraculous sight of all 20 choir members, vital and alive, streaming in their direction. For the first time in 12 years of ongoing choir practice, every single one of them, for separate, different, and unconnected reasons, had come late. Woo! That's a good one. That's a good one. Let me tell you, there was no comment at the end of that, but let me tell you, I do not get mad anymore in traffic. I really do not. If I'm held up by a slow driver, by a red light, by whatever, I think that is what is meant to happen. I'm meant to be there when I get there. And so my husband is trying to transfer to a plant um, closer to home, literally like seven minutes down the road. And he thinks he missed the deadline to apply. He talked to one of the higher up supervisors and they haven't gotten back to him yet. Um, and he mentioned it to me a couple times that I haven't heard back from so-and-so about it. And I said, I'm going to tell you this. If you miss the deadline, if you're not able to apply for the job, if you don't get the transfer, it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't in your cards. Um, I am a firm believer in not envying other people because what is meant for you won't be given to someone else. Do you know what I mean? Like what has your name on it isn't going to be given to someone else. So I told Bill, you weren't meant to have that transfer. If you don't get it, you weren't meant to have it at that time for whatever reason. Some of, most time you're not going to understand why things happen the way that they happen until much, much later. I'm a firm believer in all of that. So yeah, yeah. Okay. How are we going to continue to unfuck ourselves in this year of 2022? Not putting too much stuff in your junk journal. That's one way. <laughs> okay. The tricky thing about truth, we see it only from our own perspective. What you have relied upon as the truth is nothing more than your personal experience of incidents and circumstances. And we all see the same situation in different perspectives. I forget what story I read. I read a story a while ago about a party or a dinner. And one person was like, that was the most awful dinner, blah, 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 for whatever reasons. And then someone else was like, that was the most awesome dinner. I had the best conversation with so-and-so. Same gathering, two totally different experiences. So, yeah, all of our opinions, our thoughts are all filtered through our own brain and our own perspective of it. So I try to think about that when um, I'm in a gathering. Right? Okay. I don't know if that made any sense to you. But I hope you guys all have a great Wednesday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and spending about 14 minutes of your time with me today. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.